Okay, so good morning, everyone. Welcome to session 13, Innovation and Development in Communication. I am Dr. Michael Neverdakis, editor and writer for Orfos Logos News, which is based in Greece. And at this time, awaiting my next academic position until recently, I was at the American College of Greece in Athens, where I taught communication and uh, journalism courses. So we have three presentations that are scheduled as part of this session today. So we might as well go up right ahead and get started with the first presentation, which is environmental communication media archive reports as a participant science tool. Um, I think we have Dr. Mikhailov with us today that will be doing the uh, presentation. So Dr. Mikhailov, welcome and feel free to go ahead. The floor is yours. We'll take about maybe 15 minutes for each presentation. Uh, could, uh, could you make a share screen? Screen uh, uh, possibility for myself. Is it? I can see your screen now. Can everyone okay. else see it? Yes. Okay. Uh, thank you, and I really enjoyed in your uh, ne Dr. Nevradakis with your plenary presentation because uh, as you will see from uh, my uh, research and presentation, uh, I'm pretty uncomfortable in communication shoes, uh, but uh, my pretty comfortable hat is environment and climate change thematic issues. And this paper is made by three authors, myself, Alexandra Milodenovic from uh, think Tank Environmental Ambassadors for Sustainable Development, as well as Mr. Filip Jovanovic. And before I start on environmental communication, I have to uh, make a note that uh, recently in July 2021, I'm acknowledged by European Commission DG Klima for European Climate Pact Ambassador, uh, among others for green skills. With this presentation, I would like also to inform about climate change actions in contribution to the European Climate Pact, uh, trying to, uh, um, uh, to show to participants of this conference um, uh, to share this about the communication network. Uh, keywords of this research are environmental communication, media archive, accession to European Union, participant science, and Serbia as the, uh, uh, the country where I did this research. By sharing this experience, this paper justifies environmental communication through the media archive reports as a participant science tool considering that the journalist media are representing citizens with common interests. This is something that uh, I uh, realize it, it will fit very well in, with the previous uh, plenary presentation, um, how to think about these uh, journalists representing citizens, uh, because uh, basically, data I will present later on, will deal about something uh, about the news avoidance or something that I feel uh, very comfortable to talk, uh, to think about that later on and pr probably to shape up our research with that uh, perspective. Uh, and you see that for us authors, uh, communication is side research because we did the primary research on environmental climate change sciences. Data used in this paper were gathered to the re uh, research on environmental issues in Serbia starting from year 2011. Data of number of articles with selected term in written media in Serbia are collected. 
proposed participant science tool is compared with European Union qualitative tool towards country environmental sector progress in the process of accession to EU. And outreach of comparison showed that in timeline, when sector environment had a better performance, it is bigger interest of citizens, journalists, media to environmental issues. Illustrative justification is provided that media archive reports could be used as participant science tool to sup supplement official observation and monitoring, really just uh, to supplement. Presentation structure is introduction, methodology results, concluded remarks, and acknowledgement. Introduction. Environmental communication is a subject of a lot of research and re term, uh, trends developments. Uh, for my side of view, I would like to point out uh, terms, participative format, model for public participation, citizen science, public science, do-it-yourself science and more no integrative tool to describe and compare different participatory approaches. In a full paper we sent to organizers, uh, we give of all research references to, to um, our um, uh, statements and what we are uh, presented here. We support the view that participant and citizen science are basically terms to describe approaches of public incl inclusion in different scientific fields. In, in this case, in environmental and climate change topics related communication. Uh, it is known that participant science and citizen science is a powerful approach for raising awareness about environmental problems. Methodology. We uh, apply assumption that stakeholders engagement plan is based on citizens delegating power to journalists. And we, in this regard, we are uh, taking journalists as a research assistance to our main topic on environment and climate change. Uh, authors developed this participant science tool considering that journalists media are representing citizens with common interests and also the fact that survey is one of cross crowd sourcing tool, the core power of citizen science. Uh, just to uh, give one more sentence about that, uh, we considered that Journalists are also citizens having power to um, write for written media in Serbia. Uh, starting from 2011, we uh, collected data of number of articles with selected term in written media in Serbia. Nas uh, just to mention that na national wide newspapers media archive exists for 2003 and since to ha today have more than 2 million texts in archive. Selected terms for this research are re uh, environmental related terms, environment, ecology, because uh, in our language and practice, uh, these terms are mixed up. Uh, 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 um, very often when we use the media ecology, uh, the meaning is environment. Waste, recycling, recycling rate, landfill, biodegradable waste, organic waste, chemicals, circular economy, climate change, and chapter 27. For us, uh, it is very important. Chapter 27 is the chapter covering environment and climate change in the process of Serbian accession to European Union. And if you see outreach, outreach, outreach results, Terms environment or ecology per years is uh, showing something very interesting. In uh, 2011, we have 5,000, more than 5,000 uh, articles mentioned this world, but in 2020, we have about half of that. Uh, it is not uh, deeply analyzed, but this picture shows that uh, the interest of 
public media in Serbia about environment is less now than in 2011. It could be a lot of explanation and we are not going in that. Uh, other terms, waste, we have the similar situation. The most attention was at 2011. Recycling, uh, 2011 is the highest uh, year. Landfill, uh, we have uh, almost the similar situation. Chemicals, as you see that uh, uh, Serbian media are not very interesting on chemicals and chemical management. On climate change, this is very inter interesting. This is different than talking about environment. Uh, as a term, uh, 2019 was the peak for climate change. And uh, this is something that uh, uh, we could tell that it is uh, uh, the result of uh, global global awareness raising attention to the climate change issues. But now in 2020, we are again uh, lowering down uh, media attention to uh, climate change issues. And chapter 27, you, you could see very interesting situation that uh, 2014 and 2017 uh, is most interesting in chapter 27 accession to EU than to the other years. Meaning that you see that in 2020, it is less concern in med written media in Serbia about chapter 27 and EU accession. And it could be discussed from different angles and why this is happening. Uh, wrapping up, this is a good illustration on environmental issues attention in Serbia. Uh, these results show potential of media archive reports as participant science tool in environmental communication. Justify authors focus on written media is the issue that we found in literature that traditional media use such as newspaper, magazine and radio are more closely related with civics engagement compared with TV. And uh, uh, it is, it, this uh, uh, presentation should be understood as opportunity for co-development of country strategy and should be seen as complementary, but not substantial in the review process. In that regard, I will uh, share the, with you something what we may compare with the European Union expression about Serbian accession to EU. In European Union, citizen size is not recognized by you as an effective method to monitor success to, of European Union di directives. Uh, we uh, choose this to verify proposed uh, 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 participant so, uh, tool as a qualitative tool towards country environmental performance. European Commission each year takes the stock of situation in the candidate country. Serbia is a candidate country to EU membership. And this progress report uh, are showing how, uh, how uh, what is situation in the certain fields uh, in the country in the last year monitored. It is so-called DC progress reports. And if you see here, we collected this from, uh, this is uh, from European Commission progress report, uh, just uh, uh, focused on a, a chapter environment and later environment and climate change. You see that European Commission used the words limited progress, moderate, little, good, some, little, limited, and something like that. And if you see here that uh, uh, in 2002, 2004, we have ambitious programs, and 2010, we have a good progress. And if you put that, I will come to that. Uh, uh, this is uh, the European Commission uh, uh, um, expression. Uh, or monitoring results. 
And if you put that parallelly to what we did uh, with uh, monitoring uh, um, uh, media archive uh, uh, results, you could see the same trends uh, as um, uh, we have the uh, uh, in sector environment uh, environment the European Commission reporting is uh, go, uh, the best uh, the best remarks are uh, 2010 and 11 and if you see this for uh, when you talk about uh, the terms environment waste recycling chemicals you see that the best performance in Serbia on environmental issues are in 2011 and 2012 until now. That means that these two very difficult, uh, different approaches come together with this. And in that way, uh, we think that we a little bit justify that uh, to watch in the media archive uh, through selective terms could be very, uh, a very good tool uh, to supplement uh, official reports. And it is uh, clear then when sector environment has better performance, it is bigger interest of citizens, journalists, media on environmental issues. Uh, 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 we have tell in concluding the remarks that we did not review a number of citizen and participant science definitions and principles and uh, this paper is simple one approach uh, to uh, of public inclusion in environmental and climate change topic uh, through communication uh, and through participant science tool uh, that journalists media representing citizens and uh, it is considered that citizens delegating power to journalists in order order to have higher degree of citizens power and more powerful dissemination and transparency. Uh, we could tell that uh, this study can be a solid basis for comparison for future research in area of study. At the end, I would like to acknowledge that this research is done through the EU funded regional project and uh, uh, to express gratitude to Media Archive Ebert from Belgrade uh, with, uh, uh, with a really big thank to initial idea jointly developed by respective journalists, Velimir Churgus Kazimir, and myself uh, when we talk once uh, uh, about the possibilities to merge this to areas, communication and environment. Thank you for your attention. Okay, Dr. Mikhailov, thank you very much for that presentation. And let's take a few moments uh, to take some questions, comments, and uh, have a bit of discussion in relation to your presentation. So the floor is open to anyone that uh, would like to uh, get the discussion going. <clears throat> uh, Carl, yes. Thank you very much. Thank you uh, very much for your paper, uh, especially for the part of kind of um, giving a second possibility to monitor, to kind of measure what's going on. Um, but I'm a little bit puzzled about the other part, which is the uh, participants, science and that stuff, or civic science even, uh, because you use this trick to use the journalists as a kind of a bridge with the citizens or representative of the citizens. Uh, in my opinion, this is not the idea of civic science. It's really the citizens helping science by reporting what's going on, even by counting birds, for example. So my problem is what's the focus of your paper or 
I could reformulate it. You could strengthen the paper. If you make a paper about this alternative measurement uh, that could uh, uh, it comes to the, is, is even as good as the official counting that gives legitimacy to both of them. Uh, and then another paper about the, the, the science part and the citizens part, um, because uh, we are living in the attention economy, which is behind your argumentation. And you are only arguing only at least in your presentation with the uh, reach or outreach. And this is the old way how to uh, measure the impact how many times frequency do you reach out to how many people to get the information that you want to get them. And in the attention economy, it's more about the relevance because sometimes it has changed. In many cases, it has changed from a pull society to a push, uh, from a push society to a pull society, meaning it's not about just pushing all the information and the information overload sometimes out, but the user looking for the information and they only look for it if they can see there is a relevance. Uh, thank you very much for your um, question and your um, approach. Uh, basically, uh, basically, it is a puzzled piece of research. But uh, uh, when we look uh, uh, carefully about uh, citizen science, participant science, do it uh, yourself science, you could find about 100 approaches and 100 different uh, uh, situations. And we really, if you ask me now to give you explanation, what is that, I could come to your point. This is what I think. Uh, this is not what is really, it is really developing the, the meaning of uh, citizen science, participant science, and do-it-yourself science. In that regard, among the bunch of uh, review uh, literature, we found somewhere that journalists could be taken as the citizens. And this gave us idea to merge these things. I, uh, um, I, uh, I fully understand these are not, these are really, uh, uh, new shoes to examine and uh, um, uh, how, uh, how uh, we will uh, feel later on when we have a more clear picture what is participant science, I really don't know. As I mentioned at the beginning, um, uh, no, no of three authors are from communication point of view. We, uh, we used uh, communication media archive trying to link uh, environmental and climate change situation. And um, I will be very thankful if you um, uh, give us some concrete uh, advice uh, how we may be good forward, go forward. We will be open. Uh, maybe not now, but uh, in some kind of communication, uh, we would appreciate that. Okay, any other comments or questions? One thing that I just wanted to ask uh, based on the presentation was just uh, out of curiosity, uh, since we saw that between 2011 and 2020, there was actually a decline in the mention of a lot of uh, different topics or keywords uh, related to environmental issues in Serbia. Uh, just what do you think accounts for that decline at a time where I think in many other countries during the same period, there may have been an increase in the use of such terminology in the media? Uh, my, my thoughts are, my thoughts are uh, go, at least have two sides. 
one is the side that this is really uh, corresponding about uh, EU interest itself for uh, to uh, extension to the new countries and to the new member. As soon as we have uh, less interest of European Union to be uh, to be extended to the Balkan countries, we have less attention to the issues. Still thinking as uh, not as, as um, our development issues. Still thinking to please European uh, Commission in accession process. And another things are uh, domestic political situation following this path, using this path that uh, if European Union is not having interest, why we are going to develop that uh, quickly, because we could, we could think uh, or an old fashioned way on economic growth, economic growth and economic growth. It will be interesting now to see uh, the points of European Commission with Green Deal. And um, I have a lot of criticism of the the substance of the Green Deal, but it, it will be interesting in a few years to make the analysis how this Green Deal change this attitude uh, of citizens in uh, uh, accession countries about environmental issues. Actually, that will be very interesting because part of the Green Deal is the social uh, component. Uh, and I hear once more Balkan chance to get some money there to balance um, the effects, the social effects of the Green Deal. Uh, personally, I'm not, I'm an environmental person. I'm not looking at economy and social. Uh, I heard the same thing, but the point is when I look at environmental and the climate change issues about Green Deal for Balkan, European Commission Green Deal for Balkan, I don't find too much of environment and climate change. This is infrastructure, infrastructure and infrastructure and a little bit of policy development. Okay, if there's no more questions or comments, I will thank Dr. Mi uh, Mikhailov and we'll go on to our next presentation which is titled The Uses of Social Media Applications in Higher Education. And I think we have with us both Dr. Assad and Dr. Gaber. I hope I didn't uh, get the names wrong. So the floor is yours. Okay, hello, everyone. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank Dr. Margarita for inviting us to this uh, precious and prestigious, by the way, conference. Uh, Dr. Mona, can you share your screen, please? Yeah. Hi, everyone. Um, start now. So we prepared the presentation on Brazil. So we are starting. Okay. So our topic is about the uses of social media applications in higher education. Sorry, just a second. And we are moving now. Okay. So again, our, our paper is about the uses of social media applications in higher education. And before we start, I also I would like to introduce myself and my colleague to you. My name is uh, Dr. Amr Asad. I'm assistant professor of communication and media at the Higher Colleges of Technology in the United Arab Emirates. And my colleague, uh, Dr. Mona Gabr, uh, she is a lecturer of communication and media uh, at the Higher Colleges of Technology in the United Arab Emirates, okay? No one, no one can deny, no one can deny that social media applications such as Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram, and interest Flickr, Etc., have become uh, an integral part in our lives, right? And also, we, we all know that young people are now consuming those uh, applications heavily mm, for different purposes, right? 
نكتبونا كان يقول لك نفس الله يس كيو اوسو ناو ريس وي كانوت اوسو فورجيت ذات سوشيال ميديا ابلكيشنز كان بلاي ا بيفيتال رول ان ليرنينج اوكي اكوردنج تو ريسنت ريبورتس سوشيال ميديا ابلكيشنز بلاي امبورتنت اند سيجنيفيكانت رول ان ليرنينج اوكي because of uh, its dynamic uh, tools and uh, dynamic tools that allow people, allow students, learners to share resources, uh, actively interact with their uh, peers and uh, teachers. Okay, so what is the main goal of our paper? This paper aimed at exploring the uses of social media among uh, college students and learning, okay? And here uh, we mean by learning, watching demos, tutorials, forming online groups, learning groups, seeking academic, and, and by the way, personal support and advice from uh, peers and from teachers. And I think this paper might be seat for other papers who should Uh, look at the importance and significance of social media applications as, as an official channels for learners to express okay, their uh, uh, opinions, their feelings, uh, sharing ideas related to learning. Okay. okay so As we all know, there are different types of social media. Social media is not only one entity or not only one website. There are different forms of social media. We have YouTube, media sharing, video sharing website. We have Flickr, Pinterest, photo sharing website. We have Facebook, uh, Instagram, LinkedIn, and other important social media websites that allow people, allow learners specifically to share maybe some important ideas, uh, share uh, their learning experiences, as I mentioned, with their peers and with their uh, teachers, by the way. So as, as we all know, social media, again, uh, applications are important part in our lives. Uh, according to a recent uh, Let me give you some maybe statistics, maybe some numbers, statistics. Uh, uh, according to a recent report from the Pew Research Center, majority of Americans use YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, and TikTok. And if we go to the Middle East, let me give you some, maybe also some uh, important numbers. YouTube, YouTube is the most popular social media platform. in 2021 in the United Arab Emirates with 7.89 million users. Uh, almost 79% of the UAE population has profiles on Facebook, while YouTube penetration also stands at 87%, 87.4%, okay? followed by Instagram 67% and Twitter 52%. Uh, if we go to Egypt, uh, there are more than 49 million social media users in Egypt. Uh, in uh, Jan 2021, the number of, of social media users in Egypt increased considerably by 7 million between 2020 and 2021. Uh, according to also to recent statistics report that was published in July last month, 2021, 52% of Egyptians are using Facebook, followed by Twitter, YouTube, Pinterest, Instagram, and Tumblr. Okay. Okay, so uh, in, uh, in this study, we use the secondary data analysis technique to examine 42 studies that explore the uses of social media apps and websites among students and faculty members across different universities and colleges uh, from 2004 till 2018 in order to understand clearly the impact of those social media applications in the learning process, its usage in different academic disciplines and the factors that hinder the adoption of social media. I, I just want to add something. Uh, we started this paper before the coronavirus pandemic and we noticed, as, I, as a teacher, I noticed that 
students have their own venues, right? They have their own uh, channels. So I think this paper might be important or might be a seed for another uh, or for other researchers to explore and to examine the impact of unofficial channels. No, I'm not talking about Zoom. I'm not talking about other official channels that are offered by colleges and universities, right? Here I'm talking about the impact of unofficial channels that can allow students to share their feelings, right? According to my experience at the higher colleges of technology, my students usually invite me to the WhatsApp group, the group that is related to the course I'm teaching, right? So they share their experiences. They maybe work on projects, right? Share maybe creative and wild ideas, okay? This might not be allowed or this might not be maybe uh, accessible in formal formal uh, uh, channels or venues that are offered by academic institutions. So I think we need to understand those unofficial venues that are offered uh, by, uh, offered to the students who and learners and I think again this might be a good seed or good point starting point for uh, other researchers to examine those the impact of the unofficial channels or uh, the unofficial venues uh, that allow students to interact to collaborate to work on projects. So now the floor is yours, Dr. Mona. Thank you, Dr. Um, and um, I'll move to the findings. And I'll start with the impact of using social media in higher education institutions. So we have noticed in recent in the recent decades uh, decades that many faculty members realized that they could use social media in the course that they taught to achieve the desired learning outcomes. Um, as we all know, social media enhanced and developed uh, students' learning skills and our skills as you know, users for social media. So in learning that, you know, was an addition to their um, uh, skills and they were able to actively engage with the course subjects and to interact positively with the instructors and their peers. Um, the reason for that was to facilitate information access and sharing and to improve academic performance. So uh, we have found that several studies um, stated that uh, the interactive features embedded in different types of social media platforms contributed positively uh, in the learning process. Um, so meanwhile, um, others uh, or other researchers found that Facebook facilitated and supported online group discussions. We have, you know, even on our portal in higher colleges of technology, we have discussion boards, but the students, we notice the students prefer the, as my colleague said now, the unofficial way of discussions. And um, uh, they usually add the teachers to their WhatsApp groups and um, maybe other social media platforms uh, groups. And they like to just share their thoughts and um, before submission of the assignments, uh, they can share the drafts and um, um, ask for feedback and how to improve their uh, work and we give them some advice and so on. Even advising, academic advising that was done by, you know, some social media uh, platforms, uh, surprisingly. And um, although it's not the official advising method in the college, but it worked um, positively to um, satisfy the students you know, needs for the uh, courses, specific courses, and to understand well their choices um, of the courses before even um, start the semester. So um, uh, some studies, as we said, um, um, found that Facebook enhanced students self efficiency by increasing online interactions with faculty and colleagues. Uh, university students also believe that Twitter is a useful tool for academic discussions, information seeking, sharing constructive engagement with instructors and learners. Um, additionally, students used uh, YouTube to upload education materials, and that's what we do usually in, uh, in our college, because the, um, we used um, 
uh, Blackboard um, as our module for the submissions. Uh, and um, uh, the students feel um, that when they uh, save their uh, videos or as we teach media, they save the, their um, production, uh, either design or video, they save it on YouTube and upload the link on the uh, Blackboard. That was very um, efficient, very um, uh, professional, and it helped them also reach the industry. You know that um, you know everyone can see their work and uh, they can evaluate it. And we had students that have been reached by the industry um, and got some uh, you know work opportunities and internship um, through their um, uh, submissions on YouTube. So um, uh, um, YouTube is a very beneficial uh, tool in social media uh, to facilitate academic discussions as well. And um, other students, we ask the students if um, their peers or their colleagues um, added or submitted something on YouTube, uh, they must uh, interact with them and comment, make comments and um, write their opinions and so on. So students also believe um, uh, that wikis or wiki sites is one of the useful and in interactive collaborative learning platforms uh, that enhances online collaboration and group interaction. Um, the students feel um, or um, through these studies, the students uh, felt that um, knowledge sharing um, among their other, uh, they, their, uh, each other, um, it was very useful and it was very successful um, as they um, uh, found it a very professional um, uh, platform for knowledge sharing. Uh, if we will talk about other applications that, um, that are used in, uh, by learners and instructors to, um, as social media platforms uh, to support learning, we will talk about blogs. And we all know how blogs are effective in our lives now. We sometimes depend on them uh, to buy something or to use some service. How about so learning? So it's more efficient, efficient now. And um, uh, it showed that it's successful also in learning because in blogs, students can, or learners can um, uh, you know, submit something or uh, say something about their experience. And the students, the other students learn from these blogs and, um, you know, make choices and um, get benefit of some advice through these uh, or from these blogs. Uh, on the other hand, we have studies that uh, also demonstrated um, other applications such as Ning. And um, the students said that in their learning courses, they used Ning and um, it improved the quality of online interaction uh, among students and gave them uh, the space to post uh, files, upload videos and images. And um, that was also an option other than YouTube. Uh, we have also MySpace. It allowed teachers and students to send and receive educational materials. Um, Moving from impact to the uses of social media platforms in different academic disciplines, um, we know that in uh, different educational fields, fields uh, they adopted social media applications, um, especially in uh, their curricula. Connected uh, uh, concluded that wikis, as we said, uh, help co uh, college students learn English surprisingly, and Wiki uh, was successful in improving students' writing skills by allowing them to work collaboratively with other students and instructors. So for also computer science students, um, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube allowed statistics through uh, classrooms to engage in constructive academic discussions. Um, on the other hand, let's talk about students from health and medicine majors. Um, even you know, medicine students 
uh, could benefit from social media applications and their subjects. Uh, these applications developed students' skills and improved academic performance and fostered um, uh, team collaboration. Surprisingly, also health students were able um, to use YouTube um, and uh, the instructors of health as well were using YouTube uh, to uh, show the students um, some, um, some course materials as a supplementary tool. Um, we have some um, statistics, statistics that we can conclude uh, also um, our uh, research paper um, from it. So um, in the end, we can say that this paper stated that social media uh, sites and um, platforms have been efficient in different academic disciplines, especially Facebook that can be utilized to improve communication, promote a positive learning attitude and encourage learning and maximize the students' social capital via virtual communication. Uh, in addition to that, as we said before, YouTube allows students with participatory um, a style to um, style of learning to interact with their peers online, regardless of their location. However, not all students can be assumed to benefit from social media, either due uh, to their diverse backgrounds or due to uh, their different learning styles. Thus, it is crucial for educators to be aware of the academic and social background of their students prior to drawing up the lesson plans. It's very important. So we usually, in, in the beginning of the class um, um, or in the beginning of the semester, uh, we ask the students to um, you know, uh, introduce their, themselves and the way they interact with each other and uh, how they prefer to interact with the teachers. And this happened from the very first week of the semester. And the students usually uh, decide how to interact with their teachers and their friends. Uh, they create WhatsApp groups, as we said before. They, um, they ask if they can submit on YouTube first, something like that. Um, so, um, uh, uh, Similarly, colleges and universities should take the initiative to motivate and encourage more students and faculty to actively engage in productive online learning through social media applications. So the institutions, higher education institutions also um, have big role in um, uh, activating that method uh, and make it official um, uh, to work with it uh, during the uh, learning um, time, official learning time in classes, and also out of the uh, class. Thank you, and if you have any questions. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Mona, Dr. Assad, for that presentation. So does anyone have any questions or any topics they would like to bring up in relation to this presentation? Yes, Carl, yes, go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much for your insights and the journey through your country's journey during the pandemic by being forced actually to change something. And um, my question is about when you are talking about academic performance, getting better, hopefully for most of the students, what do you mean by that? What are the learning objectives? Or is it just they are getting through the exams better, faster, bigger, as the Americans would say about elephants, how to make them faster, bigger and better? Uh, or is it really about learning objectives? Because some of the learning objectives could improve, others could go the other way around, right? So what, how do you measure, evaluate um, the progress in academic performance? 
um, so I think from uh, my experience that um, um, the progression in um, uh, achieving the learning outcomes, it was successful by using social media because there, there is now a personal factor in that personal communication factor. So um, uh, getting closer to the students by using those um, unofficial platforms, social media platforms was successful in making the students understand exactly what they needed to, to learn, what they needed to achieve. You know, and that was not um, really the main thought of our students before that <laughs> pandemic, right? So they just come to the classroom and sit there and, let, you know, maybe interact, of course, during the class with their peers and so on. But they didn't think that much of depend on themselves as they sit at home and work, do the work by themselves and, you know, maybe they have to share personally their ideas with their peers and uh, breakout rooms right in zoom or in even discussions on whatsapp groups and um, that's really uh, was a new experience for all of us as instructors or teachers and as uh, students and for the students i mean can i add something uh, yes hello Carl. i think i met you uh, in uh, 2017 april uh, yes. for the first time yes uh, and these people, we uh, we focusing on. I, I hope it was a good meeting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, sure. Um, we we in this paper we focus on social media application as a facilitator, right? And now it's an official, unofficial um, venue for students to interact. But by the way, I tell you something: if you go to the to, to your students, for example, WhatsApp groups, you will find creative. Ideas. You might find sometimes embarrassing, <laughs> embarrassing. Maybe uh, uh, I don't know. Maybe uh, it's it's not official, right? So in this case, you should also know that this is important for students to share creative ideas, to collaborate. Maybe now we cannot we cannot uh, set objectives because it's not coming from colleges and universities, right? But if mm -hmm. colleges and universities in, maybe uh, activate, as Dr. Mona mentioned these uh, or these applications in in curriculum right this in this case we might maybe set objectives as you know CLOs we might measure them right properly but in this case I can uh, from my point of view as a teacher I can say that students are using social media apps to collaborate to come up with creative ideas even to uh, express their opinions freely Right, with no maybe you know, with no censorship, with no uh, any kind of uh, restrictions. You know that, right? So maybe next time we might also focus on education, high education, and uh, um, and as you mentioned, academic performance. But now we are talking about the, this or these applications from students' perspective, right? Maybe if I hope maybe because of the pandemic, hope academic institutions adopt. Mm -hmm. or maybe facilitate mm -hmm. or maybe encourage teachers to go to those unofficial mm -hmm. life, uh, applications and venues to check what is going on with students that's it. Um, um, then then you might be a little bit more cautious using academic performance in this paper about the unofficial something yeah because so, so you might have it as a side effect but then yeah, you have to yeah, it's, it's, it's a facilitator, right? So we are now trying to, you know, and I think uh, uh, yesterday I noticed that uh, maybe uh, one researcher talked about the uh, <laughs> the pain he faced with his students. No one is uh, participating, right? Mm -hmm. They are all, all using their uh, mobiles. So why shouldn't we go there and check what is going on, right? And this happened, by the way, in, in my classes, students ask me to join what their groups, right? And it's unofficial. And as, as Dr. Dr. Mona mentioned, by the way, we do advising unofficially. I know it's, it should be official, but I meant we, it's, it's not a side talk, but, yeah. but it, it's not a sheet chat as well, but we are trying to bring students to us and we are also trying to go to them, right? Especially now. There is only one challenge and that is um, when adults, when teachers come in these unofficial spheres sometimes the students go to another place <laughs> where the adults are not and this is why facebook in europe facebook 
is elderly people and older and elderly people now. Same, same, by the way. We, ha we are on the same page. <laughs> right, right. So, and, and I think this is, it's healthy that the students leave the control because they are fearing not the control, but they are fearing that their interaction is part of an exam already yes. and not advice. And this is not only a problem in uh, online, it's not only a problem in official or unofficial, it's also in everyday face-to-face -face uh, advice situations in the beginning that the students are a little bit confused. Is this already part of the exam? <laughs> It, it also enhanced the, um, the relationship between the faculty and the students um, positively, I'm sure, because uh, they were able to, you know, um, express their feelings and their, you know, their thoughts. And that was really, you know, like, you know, now your students, you know, their capabilities, you know, how to direct them, how to guide them. And even when we get offers from the industry, we want the best students in uh, this certain field, we know now. <laughs> who to pick and who to nominate. Okay, wonderful. So in the interest of time, let us go right ahead to our final presentation for today, uh, titled The Influence of English as a Global Language on Modern Greek Online Press, Analyzing Three Journalistic Genres with Critical Discourse Analysis. This is from Dr. Elvida Sklika. And Dr. Sklika, the floor is yours. Hello, thank you, uh, Mr. Nevradakis. I'll try to share my uh, screen. Okay. And I'll try to put it. Okay, I hope you're able to see it. Okay. Uh, so I am Elpida Sklika, I'm a teaching fellow in the University of Strasbourg. Uh, now we're, go uh, we're going to see today part of my PhD thesis. So we're continuing in the, the, the globalized context, but from a more ling linguistic uh, uh, point of view. Uh, so I'm going to talk about the influence of English as a global language on modern Greek online press. A quick outline, it's quite normal, quite uh, an introduction, then my objectives and my research questions, my data methods, some literature review, and then my results. Uh, so uh, I think you all know that uh, more or less English is the global language today, or you can uh, say an international language, or uh, there are terms like from uh, lots of scientists uh, as uh, telling us like English as an international language, uh, uh, international English, global English, English as a lingua franca, or I don't know, uh, English, simple English or, or globish or basic global English. So English is uh, used as a language for communication between different nations that they do not, uh, who do not really, uh, share a common tongue. Uh, English is used for international, academic, uh, scientific research, publishing, writing, job searching, traveling, tourism, media, uh, commercial communication, and of course, uh, cultural. I mean, uh, Hollywood, uh, film and music industry. Uh, of course, uh, Greece is not uh, is uh, quite uh, following this path because Greece is trying to get fully digitalized. <laughs> Uh, all uh, people are trying to use uh, digital communication, communication, computers, smartphones. English is everywhere on, on this, in the streets, on TV and the internet. Uh, English is the most uh, frequently taught second, uh, second language, I mean, first uh, 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 foreign language. Uh, and the traditional media are trying even, not really quickly, but trying to transform with the help of the new technologies into the new media in Greece. Uh, so what I'm trying to, I was trying to do is a, a synchronic examination of this contact, English and Greek, uh, in the last during the last decade, uh, to find the changes of the Greek language on the online press, uh, and to find the changes of the Greek media discourse through the journalists' word uh, uh, choices and their perception of the uh, Greek press or the Greek 
if we could say society today. So how has this uh, global English influenced the modern Greek? Uh, are there any traces or hints of linguistic change on the microstructural st level or then at the macrostructural level? Uh, could these uh, journalist choices serve as, mo serve as models of their linguistic behavior and their perception of the world? Or even, that's a bit ambitious uh, for just uh, research, uh, my research, uh, if we could see this, the interpretation of the potential audience of the Greek press. Uh, I have, like I said, it just, it's just a part of my uh, uh, data, a corpus of 60 texts, it's more of a uh, qualitative uh, uh, study, uh, that uh, contain 127 headlines and subheadlines and leads. Uh, I have uh, in my uh, corpus, in my data, uh, both printed and online versions uh, of uh, news, uh, 12 newspapers and three magazines, and only two pure players. I mean, uh, uh, news websites that are only online. All texts are written uh, between 2011-2015, uh, I have started collecting them, uh, collecting them uh, uh, manually and then try to use Monococ Easy, but it doesn't help a lot with the quality of research. I examined three uh, genres, uh, the news articles, further separated in uh, briefs and extended articles, opinion articles in analysis and commentary, commentaries and interviews, and only two uh, semantic fields, two columns. Uh, finance politics and world environment. Concerning my methodology, I'm following a two-step analysis, like I said, at the microstructural level to find, of course, the boring, the, find, uh, the traces of English at the lexis, at the lexicon of Greece, Greek, uh, and uh, on the text at discourse with the theory of borrowing and the contract of communication uh, on the media. And that at the macrostructural level, I'm trying to use critical discourse analysis and to examine discourse as a text, as a discursive practice, and as a social practice. Together, combined with, uh, with the theory, the framework of a top-down and bottom-up uh, implementation of English on the Greek press. Uh, quickly, some basic notions. I think you are familiar with what is borrowing, introducing new, new words in the language, what is a genre, a class of units that have the same uh, forms and types of discourse, uh, discursive strategies, uh, more or less uh, used on the media, the strategy of legit legitimation, sorry, to legitimize uh, the discourse, uh, credibility uh, to be a credible journalist and dramatization to uh, gain the attention. Uh, then the tone, the tone of the journalist, of the, the text, uh, how to, uh, uh, to express emotion, to show emotional or other paralinguistic information uh, on the text. So to move on to my results, uh, first of all, at the Lexis level, I have already found I mean, those in these uh, 60 texts, a lot of uh, different types of uh, long words or phrases, not only words, uh, like simple long words, calx, uh, uh, portmanteau words, uh, collocations, etc., etc. So examples. For example, for si simple long words, I found uh, written in Greek, uh, tra uh, transliterated or in uh, English uh, directly in the Latin alphabet sometimes re rarely in brackets or quotation marks, that means that they're not really adapted to the Greek language, uh, uh, not uh, <laughs> at, the, at that time. So you see the first one, T, uh, when you see the examples, the uh, blue color is for the Greek example, the uh, extract from the press, and then I have translated it. Uh, T is for text and the enumeration is in my uh, corpus from my corpus. So you see words like smartphones, tablets uh, uh, that can disturb our sleep, or uh, translated loans like krasino, means green, meaning go for food and stop uh, to do biofuels, or using words like uh, psychiaco marketing, yeah, like uh, uh, using digital marketing. Okay. Uh, like I said, portmanteau words like 
I have never heard of that before my uh, text, like agreement. It's a word, uh, it's a new creation, I think, from agree, Greek and uh, the suffix meant. Uh, when the Eurogroup, I don't know, Europe announced that we have an agreement at those difficult hours of the 2015, of the, uh, <laughs> during the financial crisis. Uh, or I think that quote was the example six uh, was uh, the citation of the former uh, Minister of Economy uh, Finance, um, uh, Mr. Varoufakis, that proposed a Brexit with parallel currency, uh, but never uh, came. Okay, and that was the famous uh, uh, that did not happen. Okay, exit of Greece from the eurozone before Brexit. Uh, other examples are from uh, like idioms or collocations, uh, like slow living uh, or success stories. Uh, or I uh, found a lot of uh, citations from books, films, on, and even some songs. Uh, here I can give you an example of a word play also, like a, a word play of the title Educating Rita. Uh, in Greek was called Ekpedevodas ekpedevodas ton Tsipra, educating Tsipras. And I have put in brackets the S because uh, uh, when we put the accusative case in Greek, that rhymes and makes a good wordplay uh, with educating Rita, in that case, Tsipra, the former prime minister of Greece. Uh, on a, a discourse level, my results. So in general, the news articles show a more a linear thematic progression, explicit cohesion, more or less declar declarative modality, informative tone. Uh, well, the register it varies from text to text. Uh, I found most of the times deductive reasoning and weirdly injunct injunctive discourse. I mean, some texts that uh, the journalists try to give recommendations which is something we see in opinion articles also, <laughs> yes. Uh, in, opinion art, in the opinion articles, in the analysis, uh, I found a, a more formal register, whereas in the commentaries, it was hybrid. Uh, well, in this case, in the opinion articles, I have a, uh, have a lot of subjective discourse, the use of the inclusive we, uh, a lot of direct speech and some quotes. They are longer, much longer text than the news, than the new, the news articles. Uh, the coherence is always uh, led from the, by the journalists. They are highly argumentative and deductive. Uh, deductive sorry. Uh, the interviews were, were the last uh, uh, general that I analyzed, but they're more close to the traditional style. They always had this uh, question answer model. They're also very long text, which is a bit weird, but, weird, but I, they also had an introductory paragraph and uh, something like leads that had a, a, a mini CV of uh, the interviewee. They don't really have uh, used intertextuality, the journalists. And as far as the modality, the journal, you, journalist uses epistemic or, and the interviewee uh, deontic. Uh, of course, it is a more logical genre. And like I said, I didn't really find a lot of hyperlinks, not really intertextuality, and they're more close to the written, uh, the, the press, the traditional press. Uh, as for the critical discourse, uh, discourse analysis, I have separated in uh, three types of exter uh, factors, external, internal, and uh, social factors. Uh, external factors are more like a top to bottom implementation of Anglicisms in, in, in Greek, because I found more or less the hegemonic status of uh, the global English on the Greek press. Like English is used as the language of innovation of the time and progress, uh, like a technology jargon, and because there are a lot of passport to terms uh, uh, within the text. Because, of course, there is a need to fill some gaps in the Greek lexicon, of course, sometimes in the fields of new technologies. Uh, so we have words like browser, uh, like oh, we already said, smartphones, email, tablets, lap laptops, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, this special jargon underlines uh, the, uh, the text veracity, uh, so the, and so that help, helps the journalists become more credible to the audience. 
uh, English was not, uh, not used uh, as the language of tele telecommunication and social media in my uh, uh, corpus. And uh, uh, we, uh, last but not least, the detail, uh, uh, English was really, this global English was really used a lot in the text of the in, uh, financial text, texts that were talking really about the financial crisis and introducing new words like we said, Brexit, or even others like capital control, Eurogroup, Plan B. Well, Plan B is not really a new word, but it was used in uh, English directly. Or even calcs uh, translated long words like Cure Mahreus, the dead haircut, everywhere. Uh, concerning the internal factors, I quite agree with uh, how Andrew Topoulos uh, uh, put it uh, when he do, did his research in, in the German press uh, while searching English. He said that it's a kind of English English on top, like a pattern of uh, uh, English used as a comp uh, uh, complementary, sorry, code used in addition, like on top of the predominant national uh, langu uh, language uh, on German at that time. Uh, so uh, I found in English as a, uh, uh, as a marker of indexicality in order to highlight not the hegemonic status of English, but the, the idea that the journalists uh, need to show that he knows how to speak English sometimes. Uh, he has good uh, skills and to, uh, with this uh, 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 argument, to reinforce his credibility, things that uh, when he uses translated loans or he does wordplay, uh, he knows how to master better uh, Greek, the Greek language, but uh, English too. Uh, also as a marker of dramatization, like the symbolic function of English, uh, which shows a more humoristic tone or irony uh, on the Greek discourse. And this uh, attracts more uh, the readers, gains the, the attention like using a lot of metaphors and intertextuality, like proverbs, quotes, or famous citations on the text. Of course, with this one, the register can change. You can have a more subjective tone and direct word choices of the, the journalists and more of a, more of a slogan effect uh, when we have quotes or uh, collocation, collocations used because it's, most of the times in the headlines and the leads. And uh, I can also tell you that this, the, the English were most uh, hung uh, at all of my te uh, texts, I think. Uh, uh, all the headlines had English words. It was really impressive. Uh, finally, uh, concerning the social factors, uh, factors, so I could say that uh, um, all of these texts are mostly hybrid uh, web uh, genres, apart from uh, a bit less the interviews. Uh, they reflect the discursive strategies of reporting, commenting, and provo provoking while uh, citing news, uh, because the, the, the idea is to persuade, to captivate the attention. The traces of global English influence uh, are mostly in technology and finance, the texts that uh, talk about technology, science, and finance. Uh, English is used as a personal choice a lot of times as a form to legitimize the journalist discourse, or I could say uh, not only to persuade in order to captivate, to capture the eye longer on the text, but I, if I could say, in my opinion, in order to, uh, and as an effort to modernize the Greek language, if I'm permitted to say, because I have examples that like I'm saying, the replacement of the French older borrowings, the French, which was also a former lingua franca uh, a, um, a century ago, of new English ones, like we have steel that becomes trendy style, uh, most of the times in collocations, saison, uh, the, uh, which uh, and adapted fully in Greek becomes low season, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, or uh, sometimes uh, they try to impose to the public the need to follow a more Anglo-American uh, way and of living uh, lifestyle. So to wrap it up, I could say that lexical borrowing can and does enrich modern Greek, and it opens up a new perception of the world through uh, the world the, of the Greek press 
uh, through the journalist's eyes. Uh, an influence can affect uh, what people write, read, and remains memorized. But like I said, we can see the hege hegemonic status of English, the prop uh, proper choices of journalists sometimes in, within the text. But I'm not sure that I could say, I could speak from the side of the public uh, that uh, we could talk about a possible change of the perception of the Greek reality today. If the audience is always uh, uh, okay with these changes or if they do really uh, adopt them, they do really use them. So thank you, thank you very much. You have some references if you'd like. Okay, Dr. Sklika, thank you very much for your presentation. Do we have any questions or any feedback? Why is everybody looking at me? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so it's just maybe if you want a, a little bit of advice. Yes. Um, so uh, you already tried to broaden up the uh, linguistic um, base by using discourse analysis, especially the third level, not only the discursive practice, speaking um, Fairclough, but also the social practice. But Fairclough says when we come to the social practice, linguistics is not enough. Even discourse analysis is not enough. Yeah. We have to look at, and here maybe there is some help to um, argue even more strongly for the factors that you are referring to. Uh, because they could be explained by other sociological theories, insights, which can be on the third level, help you on the third level. Um, and on the linguistic, the basic or the, the, the first one, for example, it could be speech act theory and how they are realized, worded on the uh, on the discursive practice and the journalists it could be discourse based interviews with journalists going through their texts and asking why they use those words when they use those words or using thinking aloud uh, measures or keystroke or combination of keystroke and um, uh, eye catch and they're producing texts and then replay it to them and then discussing their choices. Then you might get into some argumentation for the claims you make uh, following anthropodologies. And uh, when it comes to the social factors, of course, um, it is, uh, you could say, uh, of course, here you also could do some interviews with modern users or users of modern Greek and their motives and even focus groups and look at them. And the last point, of course, is English uh, being showing being tough, being international and so on and so forth is also a uh, youth phen phenomenon and the youth English is one of the many Englishes, uh, which is very a very different um, sociolect uh, than what journalists are using, or even polit uh, politicians, or business people. Business people. <laughs> so, I don't know if if it helps anything, but I I think you there is a lot <laughs> of work in the future, but it could substantiate your claims, which I think are really not only interesting, but very relevant to reflect on. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much for your comments and your recommendations. Uh, in fact, all of these I have already thought. Uh, to start from the, the last point, uh, 
uh, I'm well aware that uh, it's like it's a part of this work, uh, world English is, of course. I didn't really put it that way. It's a pity, but uh, uh, lacking time. Uh, that's what I called global English because in my PhD, I worked with that. It's like a different uh, dialect, like you said. And like I was also uh, suggesting, it's uh, yes, it's used a bit differently from, it's always in the new technologies and uh, young people it's, uh, use it a lot. Uh, but uh, yes, that, that sounds and uh, I've already uh, tried to examine it and work that way. But from the social point, uh, social factor, social point of view, uh, I am well aware that I had done a lot of research in the uh, Alexis discourse level, uh, even uh, on uh, some of the uh, speech acts and, and uh, how uh, the grammar and syntax works, but it, it doesn't really, it's not really enough. I know I have uh, also talked uh, with the other colleagues and my uh, supervisor that it really needs, we said that uh, it needs to uh, do also some uh, interviews because we cannot really cut, uh, we cannot really know what do these, why do these journalists uh, uh, prefer this or that uh, uh, at the first stage and then uh, we can really go in depth if we want to see the audience too. Yes. Just, just the last tip to the to the last one. Um, it's uh, there, there. There might be a lot of literature that you could get some inspiration in the field of uh, writing research. Thank you. Okay, and thank you to all of the presenters and to everyone else for their contributions as well. We are out of time. I see Margarita has entered the room. I don't know if she'd like to share something with everyone, but from my end, thank you for, a, for an excellent discussion.